Hello, hello, hello. How is everybody out there today? Trusting that you all are well. God bless you. Come on in the house. Come on in here. Y'all some time to come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. Glad to have you this evening. some time to come on in come on in oh it is a good day good day to be alive we are so thankful to the lord for his grace grateful for his mercy so thankful hey miss turner Hope all is well with you. Hey, Stevelyn. Glad to have you all this evening. Listen, uh, if you would, real quick, just drop us a note in the comment section. Let us know where are you streaming in from? Uh, if it's in Houston area, what side of town are you on? Talk to me. I'll at me. Um, if you're streaming in from uh, another part of the world, Please let us know where you're streaming in from. We're glad to have you this evening. Come on, come on in. Y'all come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Lisa Cruz Blanton, good to see you over here today. Hope all is well with you. It's one of our good members. One of our good faithful members at Journey of Faith. Glad to have you on tonight. Good to see y'all. Um, come on in. Come on, come on, come on, come on in. I invite you all. We got some good stuff tonight. Got some good stuff tonight. And I invite you all to come on in. Come on in and hang out with me for a little bit. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk. That's it. Give it a minute or so, and then we'll let it, we'll go ahead and jump on in here. Just a second, give me a second. If you don't mind, uh, uh, thank those of you. If you're dropping something in there, drop drop it in the comment section for me, please. Let us know where you are tuning in from. Uh, I want to also invite you, if you would, do me a favor, a huge, huge favor, uh, and take this video, if you would, please, and share um, share it on your account. Share it on your page. Uh, start a watch party. 
Uh, it helps us out ministry wise to spread the gospel, to spread the good news. Uh, when you help us uh, by sharing uh, of our post to your page and sharing to those uh, that are con that are you are connected to, uh, those who are friends of yours on your page. And so I want to invite you, if you would, please take some time uh, to to share this. And if you would, please, uh, if you would, also I want to ask you. Uh, to start a watch party. Uh, then I also want to ask you if y'all would please drop in the comment section. Uh, uh, if you have a, a prayer request, uh, please drop that in, in, prayer, in the comment section so that our prayer team, our, our church can be praying for you. Uh, then I'm going to also ask you if you would please let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, once again, if you're tuning in from uh, a uh, one a particular side of town in the Houston metro area, please let us know where you're tuning in from. We are glad to have you this morning. Uh, if you're tuning in from out of state, please tune, uh, drop us a note in the comment section. We are having um, streaming this live now of, to YouTube and to our Facebook um, page as well. And, um, uh, also, even to my my uh, my faith, my personal Facebook page, so um, and so we're spreading the gospel, spreading the good news. And my hope uh, is that you are blessed on the scene. I want to open up uh, as I typically do every week uh, with a very little simple song uh, of praise. Uh, song simply says, "Here's my worship. Take joy in it." Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I surrender all to you. I surrender my life to you. Very simple song. Very simple, simple song, okay? Can y'all help me sing that? Uh, song says this, here's my worship, take joy in it, make it your dwelling place, I want to put a smile on your face, I present my, my heart, heart to you, I present my life to you. Is there anybody here tonight? You say, I'm presenting my life to the Lord and I want him to take my heart. I want him to take my mind and have all of me. Come on, say it again. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. And then the song goes on to say, Here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Can we say that? Here's my worship. Here's my worship smile. I want God to smile on us. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Simple song says, here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Oh, here's my worship smile. Here's my life, Lord, smile. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. I present my life to you. Another song says this, give myself away. 
I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. That's what I'm doing because I want God to be pleased with my praise. I want him to be uh, um, uh, filled with joy at the fact that I come to him tonight. And so I invite you that as all of us come tonight, uh, submitting ourselves uh, to the throne of grace, submitting ourselves to God's complete and perfect will for our lives. I invite you tonight to just lay at his feet. I invite you to open up your hearts, open up your minds, open up your spirit, and ask the Lord to come in now. Let's pray. God, we thank you. We love you tonight. We thank you for being such a great, awesome, magnificent, and awesome, uh, more mighty, miraculous God. You have performed miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle in our lives. And God, we know that if it had not been for you, who was on our side, where would we be? And so we thank you now. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you, Lord, that you kept the deaf angels away. We thank you, God, Lord, that you keep the bill collectors. God, we thank you, Lord, that you are able to provide the resources that we need in order to pay the bills that we need. But Father, help us to be better stewards, Father, even greater stewards of that which you have entrusted into us, Father, so that we don't always need a miracle, but we know that you are a miracle worker. Well, thank you, God. Lord, that you, Father, give us good sense. And we thank you, God, uh, that, Father, in that good sense, Lord, that you are able to continue to lead us and guide us, Father, to do what's right. Father, we thank you for everything that you have blessed us with, that you have entrusted into our care. We pray right now, Lord, for those family members, Father. Uh, we lift up husbands and wives, spouses, uh, husbands and wives. We lift up sons and daughters. We lift up grandchildren, uh, grandsons and granddaughters. We lift up great grands and nieces and uncles and nephews and, and brothers and sisters. We lift them up right now, dear God. Lord, that you would have your way in their lives. Oh God, we thank you and we glorify you for all that you've done and all that you continue to do. Meet us in this meeting on tonight. God, we'll be, give, we'll be careful to give your name, the praise, and the glory, and the honor shall be yours. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Well, welcome to another night, uh, day of Wednesday Night Live. Uh, listen, once again, if you care to share, uh, add a compliment uh, into the compliment section, uh, you can do so. You are able to do that on tonight. Uh, but I want to take your attention tonight to... Uh, we're going to go to uh, uh, Mark chapter 10, uh, where we left off from this past uh, Sunday. We had such a mighty, marvelous, uh, miraculous time in the Lord. Uh, and I am just thankful for how God uh, uh, used us on this past Sunday is, as we continue this series. Don't forget the poor. I tell you, I don't know what God is up to, but he's up to something great and mighty. And I am so grateful and thankful uh, that he continues to keep using us uh, in a special way. And so we pray right now. Uh, uh, I pray right now that God would Lord encourage that, that the Lord God would encourage your hearts uh, on this evening uh, and lift you up as we dive into this particular word uh, that God gave us. Uh, to share on this past Sunday, I want to just kind of take a, a little closer look at the text uh, here. And so if you would, if you have your Bible, we're going to go to Mark chapter 10. And I want to look at um, uh, verses 46 through 52. Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. Okay. And it reads, I am reading from the NRSV uh, of this particular passage of scripture. So I invite you, uh, if you have uh, that, you can share whatever version of the Bible you read from. It's fine as well. Uh, but here we are, Mark chapter 10, verses 
46 through 52. And the word of God reads, they came to Jericho as he and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Listen at that. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out and even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, call him here. And they called the blind man saying, take, saying to him, take heart, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what do you want for me? What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, my teacher. Other versions would be, your version might read rabbi. Let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and followed him on the way. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As we journey in this passage of scripture, I want to bring I want to I want to bring your attention to uh, a few things on the night as we consider the story of blind Bartimaeus actually uh, and there's another uh, particular text, I would ask that you would write down, uh, if you would, Luke chapter 18 at verse 25, that you will find um, this particular passage, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 18, verse 25, uh, you will find uh, Luke's accordance of this particular passage of scripture, all right? Um, Blind Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus is, uh, his name simply means the son of Timaeus, his father, uh, who was Timaeus, his father's name uh, uh, simply meant uh, uh, highly prized. Uh, but then there was another definition uh, to, uh, to Timaeus, to Timaeus' name uh, that I want to bring your attention to on tonight because if you, uh, tonight because uh, the other definition of his name um, simply meant death. Simply meant death. Uh, and so, uh, how is it that your name, in one sense, means highly prized, and in another, it means death? Bartimaeus, uh, his son, is blind. The text does not indicate when he went blind. We don't know if he was uh, blind from from birth. Uh, what we do know uh, is that he indicates uh, in this particular passage of scripture that at one point in time, uh, blind Bartimaeus uh, was actually uh, could actually see. If you re if you remember and you look at verse, um, if you uh, remember, he says in the text right around verse fifty one, when Jesus asks him, says. Uh, what would you have me to do for you? He simply says, let me see again, which was the title of the sermon from this past Sunday, let me see again. Uh, I want to bring to your attention a couple of things that came up today, especially uh, in our 10 a.m. Bible study and that we raised in this particular sermon uh, passage uh, on this past weekend. Um, understand that we are living in some trying, uh, uncertain times. Uh, my father would say is perilous times. We are living in perilous times. And we don't know what's coming from left to right, from front to back, from north to south. What we do know is that even in all of this, God is still God and God is real. God is at work and God is up to something uh, with uh, racism and, and police brutality and, and uh, 
senseless acts of violence, folk being killed, folks being uh, uh, dying by asphyxiation, which means to be strangled in a sense, uh, choked out, uh, or folks dying because of uh, gunshots, uh, uh, very senseless acts of violence. And, and then you have leaders uh, fussing with each other, can't get, can't get uh, any get right with each other because you said this and you were wrong about saying this and how can you think this and you have uh, um, folk that are protesting and, um, um, uh, senior citizens being pushed over by police officers uh, and nobody uh, stopping to check in on the, the man uh, I, it's, it's, it's some crazy uncertain times that we are living in and in this particular passage of scripture, we find a man who is blind uh, to all that's happening and going on, but he heard, the text says that he heard that Jesus was coming. In order for him to hear that Jesus was coming, uh, he had, somebody had to have said something to the effect that Jesus was coming. Uh, if you look in Luke's uh, accordance of this particular passage, you will find that Luke simply says, Luke simply uh Ask the question, who, what's going on? Who's coming? And, and very simply, uh, the response of those that were that were coming by in the crowd, Jesus of Nazareth is coming. What you find about blind Bartimaeus is that in this particular moment, he's able to use one of the only one of the one of the fine senses that he has left he's is it but he uses both he he's able to ask a question who's coming uh he uses his his ability to speak but then he also uses his ability to hear i can't see what's going on but i can hear what's going on and because i can hear what's going on i'm able to respond or, or, or uh, from an oral uh, standpoint to uh, what's happening and unfolding right before me. I imagine that uh, Bartimaeus is at a place in his life uh, where he probably had struggled with the hope of ever being able to see again. Have you ever been in a place uh, where you almost gave up on the hope of seeing something uh, maybe it was a vacation that you wanted to go on. Maybe it was a destination uh, that you wanted to see. Maybe it was a loved one that you hoped to see again. Uh, that seems like time had passed by and passed by. And it seemed like so much had happened and gone on that you maybe never were going to be able to see that loved one again. I imagine that blind Bartimaeus is going through that and blinded by the darkness uh, that he is experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, uh, you, 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 you see that Bartimaeus in the text is a beggar. Bartimaeus, um, uh, because he is blind, he is subjected uh, in order to make a living, in order to survive, he is subjected uh, to having to beg. Son, Seth, Seth, close the door, son. subjected to um, begging because this is his means of surviving um, in order for him to make it in a day to day uh, I imagine he's he he understands uh, he understands that he has to get up there and he has to beg now watch this uh, Jericho was known to be a city, a very prosperous city and so because Jericho was a very prosperous city uh, uh Someone like Bartimaeus would know what road, what street that he needed to get out on in order for him to to experience the compassion of others' earnings, uh, so that he could have uh, um, uh, have resources, have access to resources to help him uh, as a blind beggar. Okay, uh, now let's take a look at this. Somebody informs him that Jesus is coming. Somebody encourages him, probably unknowingly, 
that Jesus is coming. Understand that for, 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 for blind Bartimaeus to speak to Jesus and to call him out as the son of of David, Jesus, uh, Bartimaeus in this moment, and he not does it, he doesn't only do it once, but he does it twice. Bartimaeus is a, affirming the uh, the prophecies of old from the prophets who spoke that there would be a seed that would rise up out of the root of David, out of the root of Jesse, uh, 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 and, and he would be the Messiah. You remember? Uh, the prophet Isaiah spoke of this uh, uh, and understand uh, that the only way Bartimaeus could know this was that Bartimaeus had been taught this. It was not uncommon in Jew, uh, uh, in, in the culture uh, 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 of the Jews to pass on the scriptures, to pass the prophecies on from generation to generation so that though for generations to come you would know you would have heard uh from from the time that you were knee high to a baby you would have heard of these scriptures these texts these ancient texts that were passed on um from generation to generation and so um it is uh that um uh, in order for uh, Bartimaeus to affirm Jesus of Nazareth as the as the son of David, uh, there had to have been a reputation that precedes Jesus prior to the encounter his encounter with blind Bartimaeus. I imagine then that uh, you know how people do, how folk do, uh, especially church folk love to talk. We love to pass messages on. Uh, I know if I'm stepping on your toes, just say ouch and let's keep moving. Uh, but we love to pass messages on. I imagine that this message was that of one that was positive in the life of Bartimaeus uh, because Bartimaeus does not just refer to him as Jesus of Nazareth, but it's evident here that Bartimaeus knows something about Jesus. Perhaps it was the miracles that he had heard uh, about Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth uh, performing. Uh, and so what we see in this text by the time uh, Bartimaeus refers to him as the son of David, he referring, he is affirming him as the Messiah. He is affirming him as the one, the anointed one who was to come to save uh, the Jews, not saving the Jews in a military standpoint. Uh, uh, however, though many Jews of this time uh, were under the impression that the Messiah was going to be a military Messiah, a Messiah who was going to come with an army to save them from the oppression of the Romans. Uh, understand there's a race war going on. Somebody would say, well, Pastor, these texts have nothing to do with racism. Yes, they do. Understand that Jesus uh, comes to confront all of that, which is a sin, uh, because racism is about division. Racism is not about unity. It is counterculture uh, to unity. Racism is counterculture uh, to uh, to inc uh, inviting others into pure uh, fellowship as Jesus stood for. And so I don't understand uh, folk that call themselves believers, folk that call themselves Christians who stand up uh, 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 and walk away from the conversation of racism when others in in uh, when others in the group uh, in uh, groups uh, uh, whether a uh, white persuade, uh, Anglo persuasion stand up and say that racism is wrong. I don't understand how you can call yourself a believer and say you have fellowship with Jesus when you and 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 you say in the same sentence. But I don't want to hear about racism. I don't want to talk about racism. Yes, all lives, uh, black lives matter, but all lives matter. I don't understand how you can call yourself a believer and you. Stand and, and not stand up for righteousness. And righteousness is that Jesus has called us all into fellowship with himself. I know, Pastor. Well, Pastor, you're taking a left turn. I'm not taking a left turn. What I'm trying to tell you uh, is that in this moment and in this time that blind Bartimaeus is standing on the roadside, he's a beggar, we see that Jesus is coming. Jesus is about to pass him by. And blind Bartimaeus uh, represents that 
person that has lived in the margins of society. Blind Bartimaeus represents that person uh, who has been blind uh, to justice, uh, 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 who has not seen Ah, has not seen uh, social uh, social justice, has not witnessed what real justice is because you have lived uh, 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 so succumb uh, and so subjected to, uh, to the injustices uh, of, of the world around us and systems, the systematic uh, racist, racist, racist systems that have been implemented to keep uh, certain individuals, black folk, brown folk, Asian folk, uh, in, uh, folk of, of, of Arabic descent have been uh, developed and designed to keep the minority down, to keep a knee on their neck uh, so that you cannot get up and live in the equality for which Jesus Christ uh, has called us to be able to live into. And so Jesus confronts all of this. And so this is all representative of this particular passage of scripture because blind Bartimaeus uh, 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 is looking for the justice of being able to see, uh, have vision to see on the same plane that many others are able to see. A couple of things that I lift up for you on this past weekend was one. Uh, I asked the question, can you hear hope coming? Can you hear hope coming? But because right now in, the, in, in, in this 21st century, the culture that we're living in is uh, right now uh, on, the, on the heels of the deaths of, of Pope like George Floyd and, and Breonna Taylor uh, Eric Gardner and Ahmaud Arbery, um, uh, what we find uh, is a hope for something better. What we find uh, is that we are hearing uh, not just in Houston, Texas, not just in uh, Minneapolis, not just in Chicago, and not just in New York and LA, but all across the United States of America, the United States of America, uh, and we're hearing in, in, in places in Africa and Ghana and, and Nigeria, we're hearing it in Australia and, and in the UK and England and, and all of these various places, we're hearing of people crying out for justice, all uh, to see us to diminish this, this evil spirit of racism, this evil uh, system of racism, this evil cycle of racism. I'm here to tell you tonight uh, that you have to understand that at the very core, there's some things that we're going to be lifting up and I'm going to be having some town halls when we have some, uh, some conversations with some others, but you have to understand that at the core of racism lies uh, a couple of things. What are you talking about, Pastor? At the core of racism lies insecurity. Uh, people that have been lied to. Uh, let me go back. Uh, lies, uh, lying. Uh, it, it is a pure lie. Why? Because that lie perpetuates insecurity. Why? Because you have made folk for years. And it didn't just start some 400 years ago. My people, hear me, Black folk, African American. It didn't just start 400 years ago. But this has been something that is an age-old issue. Jesus had to confront the racism, uh, the, 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 the Roman Catholics, uh, uh, not Roman Catholics, the Roman Empire uh, that was set against uh, the Jews. Uh, we had, he had to confront uh, uh, so many more racial, uh, uh, racial, so much more racial tension. Uh, and even the apostles would come and have to do the same thing uh, where they had to basically uh, 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 inform and let let uh, the Christian Jews know there was no longer a uh, Jew nor a Gentile, but because of Jesus who has broken down the wall of separation, the wall that separates us uh, 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 for, uh, through races, and now Jesus has removed that wall of separation uh, according to Thessalonians and he has made us one. 
one with each one with him and one with each other and so there is no way that we can look at the suffering of those uh, that we have seen recently in our media and 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 not be able to say if you are if I call you my brother and my sister in Christ if your people are hurting then my people are hurting why because you are my people you are my family uh, 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 we may not have the same mother but we so do have the same father come on somebody if we 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 may, we sing the ser- we serve the same god we may not have been born from the same uh parents however because we serve the same god the same god has called us into oneness with him and because he's called us into oneness with him we are one with each other and so if you're hurting I'm hurting. If you're mourning, I'm mourning. If you're crying, I'm crying. If you're suffering, I'm suffering. If you've been, if you have experienced injustice, then I have experienced injustice. If there's no peace for you, there's no peace for me. The only way that there is going to ever be peace is that God, uh, God's people have to come together and we have to influence and impact a, 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 a secular system, a secular culture. Let me tell you what else is at the core of racism. I told you lying is at the core of racism. I told you that insecurity is at the core of racism because in the, the, the lie is that if you do for them, then they're going to take your women. They're going to take your children. They're going to take your husband. They're going to take your job. They're going to take your property. And that is a bold faced lie that has gone on for so long. There's no room for them here. There's no room for you to fit here. One of the things that I lifted up uh, for you on this past weekend uh, is that our country is known for making room when we want to make room. Uh, we made room uh, for 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 uh, for the Jewish people uh, uh, back in the uh, 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 in 1938. World War II is going on happening, and President Roosevelt, uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt, makes space for. Uh, uh, for for the Jews that were here on uh, on temporary visas uh, that were German uh, German Jews, right? Uh, what's this? Uh, then, if you keep going back, there was the potato famine uh, in the 1800s uh, in Ireland, where so many, we're, up, we're up with of 1.5 million plus uh, uh, um, Irish. Uh, uh, Irish brothers and sisters um, uh, came to uh, came to the United States seeking refuge, uh, looking for jobs, looking for a better place uh, to live. Uh, but so many died during that famine of disease and starvation. Uh, but there were so many that were saved because the uh, the United States opened up and allowed uh, those of that. And so the same state, the same country that was able uh, to, to see past, uh, to see past folks race and see their need and invite them to come in is the same country that can do it again. What are you saying, Pastor? I came to tell you tonight that hope is coming. Hope has come. Can you hear the hope? Can you hear Jesus is on the move? Jesus is moving with the crowd. Can you hear uh, that deliverance is nigh? The kingdom has come near us. And guess what? It's our opportunity to cease the kingdom. It's our opportunity to cease this time, this moment in time to make a difference, to see what God is going to do. I promise you, I guarantee you, I speak prophetically tonight that God is, is allowing us to see again. He is opening up our sight to see the hope that we can live in a better society. He's opening up our eyes to see that we can live and experience uh, equality for all socially and economically. He's opening up our eyes to see the endless possibilities that we have more in common with each other than we do uh, if we don't come together and talk than we do. Uh, 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 your, the color of your skin does not change the fact that you have something in common with a white brother and a brown brother and an Asian brother. All right. It does not change the fact that there's something while we culturally may have some differences there's a lot more about us that is the same. Can you hear hope coming? Because I'm reminded of Dr. Martin Luther King and his dream where Dr. Martin Luther King said, I dream of a time where there's where little white boys and little 
black boys will be able to join hand in hand where little white girls and, and little black girls will be able to join hand and brown girls and, and, and white boys and, 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 and all manner of uh, culture will be able to join hand in hand. I was so encouraged on yesterday uh, and I am so thankful. You all don't understand, especially for those of you that live in Houston, uh, you should you should be proud uh, of the fact uh, to, to have Reverend Lawson, uh, the pastor emeritus of the, of the historic Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Reverend Lawson was a, uh, he was a, an avid civil rights activist. And, and Reverend Lawson said at Greg Lloyd's funeral, Greg, 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 George Floyd's funeral on yesterday. And I was so delighted that he said this. He said, um, he said, this, there's hope here. I can, there's hope. This is good. What's happening is good. He says, because when he was protesting, um, the faces were all black, pretty much all black when he protested. He said, but now to look up and see white on the sides of black, to look up and see brown uh, Hispanic folk on the side, on the same shoulder, uh, uh, along with the black brothers and sisters, uh, standing up for what is right, standing up for righteousness, standing up for justice, and shouting to the heavens that if there is no justice, there will be no peace. Standing up uh, uh, and, and in the trenches uh, with your brothers and sisters and declaring uh, that uh, if I can't, if you can't breathe, then I can't breathe, and we all need to be able to breathe together. And 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 and, and it was amazing. It was amazing to hear Dr. Lawson so eloquently uh, 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 articulate uh, articulate the hope that he's able to see. We are better together than we are apart. Here's the second thing that I leave for you tonight, and we'll be finished. The second thing that I leave for you uh, in this particular passage of scripture is that you got to learn how to make your request bold and loud in order for you to recover your sight again. You got to make your request bold and you have to make it loud. The text says that they turned at some when, G, when, when Bartimaeus cried out to Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. There were some that said to him sternly, they were mean, they were mean about it, y'all, and told him, be quiet. Shh. Don't nobody want to hear that. Are you tired of folk telling you to be quiet? See, see, that's what I like about the protests that are happening and taking place and going on, uh, is, that, uh, is that for so long, folk have said, don't talk about that. We don't want to talk about racism. For so long, folk have, have tried to act like it doesn't exist. And now you have a generation of them who are standing up and saying and declaring to the heaven, we will not take it anymore. We will not do it anymore. No longer can we sit in silence and not speak up for righteousness sake. No longer. Can we stand on the sidelines and not speak out against the brutality, against the hatred, against the division, against the discouragement? I tell you, I was saddened to see a 75-year-old man, white brother, out protesting. looking for peace and trying to encourage peace. And I'm not against officers, all officers. I don't think that all officers are, are bad. Y'all don't hear me here. I don't think that all officers are bad. I don't think that all officers, I don't know, I don't, not for once do I believe that. I have some good friends that are officers who I think are, are stand up, uh, uh, stand up citizens and stand up law enforcement. So don't ever get me wrong. Do I think that, that law enforcement needs to be defunded? No. No, I don't. Do I think we need to abolish law enforcement? No. I think the system needs to be changed. I think the system needs to be upgraded, updated. I think that the system itself needs to be uh, 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 overhauled. That's what I think.
That's what I think. I was the lot. It, it 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 pained me to watch the senior uh, the senior citizen be pushed over like a like a like a doll. Hits his head on the ground. And to watch the video of the blood just hemorrhaging, of him hemorrhaging in the back of his head, and to know that our leader considered it to be a hoax, to be a joke, to be a trap. That, my friends, is an example of biased privilege and racist undertone. That, my friends, is a prime example of somebody who does not care, of somebody who chooses not to get involved. That is a prime example of lack of compassion. To watch the officer who wanted to tend to the man and others pull him back and say, no, uh-uh. Lack of compassion. I tell you, hope is coming though. I tell you today that this is the time for us to stand up, to speak loudly, and to not let folk intimidate us because that's another core of racism is, is intimidation. It's a bully. I want to scare you into not saying anything. But can I tell you how free you can be? How free you can be if you open up your mouth, if you stand up. The text says that when they told him to be quiet, blind Bartimaeus shouted again with an even louder voice, son of David, have mercy on me. Will you shout louder tonight? Will you stand up? I love that the Bible says that in that moment, Jesus stands still. Of all of the people that were around him, the crowd is moving with him. Stars going on. And Jesus stops for them. Because I believe sincerely that Jesus heard hmm, he heard something different. There was something about the cry of his child. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't care uh, who you are. Any good parent will not ignore the cry of their child, no matter what's going on and where they are. If they hear their child in distress, a good parent is going to stop no matter what's going on to see to their child. Jesus stops, just as he did when the people were pushing in on him and all around him with the woman who had the issue of blood, who said, if I could just touch the hem of his, if I could just touch his garment, I know I will be made well. Jesus hears the voice of blind Bartimaeus who reached out through voice to touch Jesus, to call on him. Jesus stops and asks him to come on. And those that were around him said to blind Bartimaeus, come on, get up. He's calling for you. Blind Bartimaeus jumps up. He takes off his cloak. He throws it to the side. He goes to Jesus. Jesus asks him, say, what is it that you would have me to do for you? That's a blank check. I'm telling you, I, I'm standing in need. I, I don't care. If Jesus ever asked me, what can I do for you? I'm going to go down the list. See, you ought to have a list of things ready. You ought to have something ready. For when Jesus says to you, what is it that you have for me to do for you? Right now, the request that we have for Jesus to do is to seek justice for everybody and not just somebody's. Justice for everybody. So the folk can see again. If you want to make this country great, there needs to be justice.
The only way America can be great is that there has to be equality for everybody. The only way that America can be great again is we have to raise our thinking and not be so childish, uh, so futile in our thought. And the church said, amen. Come on. Listen. The only way, the only way is that we have to work together. And I believe God has opened that door through, uh, tragically, through the death of George Floyd. But God is working it all out for our good. He's turning this thing around. So that the impact that needs to happen can happen. So that the changes that need to happen will happen. If you're in the room with somebody, I invite you to tap them and say, I want to see it again. I want to see the hope on the faces of those around me expecting God for even greater things upon 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 uh, learning of how uh, our cries for change uh, were honored and respected. And now we can get on to seeing uh, what the next thing is that God wants to do and use us to do. I want to see that. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I invite you to, to pray with me. It is my prayer that Jesus will allow you to hear, that you will be able to hear what's coming down the pipeline, that the Spirit of God will let you hear. Secondly, it is my, my prayer, my, my, uh, my hope that you will make your requests loud, make them bold, speak up. And then I want you to recover your sight. I want you to experience what real joy, what real peace is like. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. For you have been such a wonderful God. We thank you for your glory. My prayer, God, is Lord, that you would restore our sight new things that you are going to do. Father, as we see you attack this spirit of the lying uh, spirit that is associated with racism, as we see you, Father, as we see you, God, ever the more, we thank you, Lord, for the new things that you're doing in our that you're doing in us and through us. And so help us, God. Help us, God, to walk in your way. Help us, God, to live in purpose. Father, help us to use the influence that we have with others. Father, to make a difference for the sake of your kingdom so that we all can live into the unity, the peace, and the joy that you bring. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, thank you for being with us on tonight. I want to invite you to join us tomorrow evening. Facebook Live. No YouTube, but Facebook Live. I want to invite you tomorrow evening to join us uh, right here uh, for our <coughs> weekly prayer. We war in prayer. We can make a difference. We can make change by prayer. So I invite you to join us right here tomorrow. Uh, Facebook Live. Uh, there's a conference call. You can find the conference call information on our website if you go to www.faithjourneyumc.org. You can find that information on our website. I invite you to go and check it out right there. Uh, and you can find the information on how to stay connected. That's what you want to look for, how to stay connected. 
and you will find our prayer line. Tomorrow evening, Central Standard Time, 6.30, and we'll be live Facebook and live on our conference call, amen. I uh, also want to inform you uh, that as we prepare to celebrate the life and the legacy of none other than our very, 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 very faithful longtime member, Mrs. Yvonne Williams, uh, we will be celebrating her life uh, on this coming Saturday. Uh, just so you all know, there's going to be a public viewing from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. on this coming Saturday, July, uh, June the 13th. Uh, so I invite you to be here and then uh, we will be streaming her service live at 11 a.m. Uh, let me let you know now that our um, uh, the public viewing uh, is a you and go. There is no staying. Uh, we are encouraging everybody to come view and keep moving right back out the building to your vehicles. There's no congregating for the safety uh, of others uh, as uh, due to COVID-19. Uh, we want to ensure that we are following the guidelines and making sure that we keep, uh, we stay safe and we keep you all safe. Uh, masks are mandatory for all who will come. Uh, on this coming Saturday, our team will be in place ready to receive you. Uh, again, the public viewing from 9 a.m. to 10.30 uh, a.m. Uh, and then at 11 a.m. sharp, we will stream live the celebration of life for Missy Bond Williams. I want to ask that you continue to keep in prayer our dear brother uh, and friend, a mentor, um, Mr. Orlando Williams and his family, uh, his son, Pastor Orlando Williams, uh, and uh, daughter, Jamie uh, Williams. We want to ask that you keep them in prayer. Our very own uh, Sister Tracy Bullard, who is their goddaughter um, and who was very close. Her parents were very close with the Williams. Uh, and so we ask that you would keep them all in your prayers. And little Ever and all of the other grandchildren, uh, we ask that you would keep them in your prayers. Uh, it is always a pleasure to be with you all three. Listen, y'all see my son running back and forth. Um, uh, he's hanging out with me tonight. Uh, and he, I, I know he's just itching to get on camera. Uh, however, uh, thankful to have my son with me on tonight, Mr. Seth uh, Paul Goldsmith. Listen, I want you all to enjoy the rest of your evening. We want you to know we love you. And I pray God's grace continue to cover, keep, lead you, and guide you. A special way. Listen, if you have a prayer request, please drop that in the comment section. Uh, Pastor Randy Young, I love you, man. Uh, Sister Young, love you. Uh, Sister Regina, love, love you, cuz. Uh, uh, Sister Liz Warren and Stephen, we love y'all. Love you all. Love you all dearly. Glad to have you all tonight. Um, uh, look forward to seeing you all join us Sunday morning right here, 10 a.m. Uh, uh, on live, our, our face, our YouTube live, YouTube live. You can go to our church website. Uh, and tune in to our live experience uh, on Sunday uh, at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, all right? And we will continue the conversation. Don't forget the poor. Love you. By God's grace, y'all be blessed. Bye-bye.